I posted this picture a while ago on uh, one of my uh, on, on Facebook, and someone pointed out to me, "Did you just tip over an epoxy bucket? Never do that." And uh, this person was right, and uh, he called me out, and I think now's a good chance to sort of bring up this subject. And in this video, I'm going to tell you why you should never tip over epoxy buckets like I show you in this in this picture. And the reason is because you might get sticky epoxy. You might get little soft or sticky spots on the floor. And these can be caused by the tipped pail problem, by tipping over a pail like in this picture. In fact, I have an entire video called Sticky Epoxy Floor. I'm going to post a link to that video and also some other videos later on. But let's remember now, epoxies are two component products. You've got the A and the B component. You must properly mix the entire quantity for the floor to cure. Sometimes, here's what happens. You look at these buckets. Um, there is uncured epoxy on the side and the bottom of the pail. You have the A component resin. And what happens when you mix the pro epoxy, that part never gets mixed. So when you tip it over, what you get is you may get some excess resin or excess hardener that never really was mixed in with the rest of the product and what i say here is leftover molecules so if you had molecules from the a component the, the epoxy resin and if it does never if it never connected with a hardener it will always remain sticky and this is very common you may get some stuff stuck at the bottom of the pail or on the side and that stuff kind of if you tip over the pail that stuff kind of drips at the end and it was never mixed in with the rest of the epoxy. So you may get a soft spot there. So how do we avoid this tipped bucket problem? Uh, how can we reduce the chances of getting it? I'm going to go through a few things we can do. Um, and I've, I've implemented these measures and I've seen an improvement. I, I, I very, very rarely get any unsticky epoxy these days. Um, I think the best one is you want to use a larger third pail or like a or like a barrel. In this case, we cut a cut a barrel in half, and we use that to mix our components. So what you have is you can empty the pails in this bigger barrel and then mix everything there. That way, you kind of you can scrape the sides and the bottom of the previous pails and make sure that everything gets mixed in. Um, that's one way of kind of preventing or making sure that everything gets mixed in properly and you don't have a tipped pail problem. Another one is. Before you actually mix the A and the B component, you want to pre-mix just the A component. So just mix it a bit, make sure that it's evenly distributed, especially if you've had a uh, epoxy paint for a few weeks or months. The solids tend to like sink to the bottom. So you want to pre-mix it and make sure that the whole product has been sw swished around a bit. And then you add the hardener. And that way you know that the whole product is already like moving and flexible and mixing around. So that's another method. Another great way to sort of prevent the uh, problem is by back rolling. Back rolling is great because you kind of use the roller to mix the product around a bit. So it means if somewhere on your floor you've only got a component by back rolling, there's a higher chance of that product kind of getting mixed up with the rest and finding some hardener molecules to bond to and you get a uniform properly uh, sur properly bonded surface. I find that it works really well with self-leveling epoxy if you want to use a back roller. If you're doing a, a paint applied floor like a, like a thinner floor you might find that back rolling isn't enough to eliminate the um, sticky epoxy problem. You want to make sure that you've mixed it in properly. And finally and the most important thing is whatever I assume you'll do the first three steps I've listed here, but also avoid tipping over buckets. Now, in this case, yes, these were my guys and they should have known. They they had this habit and maybe it was my fault too. I mean, I was taking the picture at the time and I didn't seem to notice that the bucket had been tipped over. In general, I always tell them to avoid tipping over buckets. And so just remember, you can do the three things I just listed here, which is use a larger a third pail to mix all the components Pre-mix the A component to make sure that's already been swished around a bit so none of the product is stuck to the bottom or the pail. Back rolling is great too. And there is so much more we can learn about epoxy chemistry. I have more videos I'm going to post below. But if you join our course, we have a module where we talk all about mixing. We talk about solvents and water-based products and temperatures and how all these factors affect epoxy and epoxy floors in the final result. So you definitely want to check out our course. 
I'm going to post a link to it below. This is our course, Learn Epoxy Floors. It's a step-by-step -step course. We cover the fundamentals. We cover everything from surface prep and priming. We talk about epoxy chemistry. We talk about all sorts of different systems you can use and how to organize your team. There's so much stuff in that course. Anyway, if you haven't already, thank you and subscribe to this channel so you get notified every time a new video is out. Thank you very much for watching and don't forget to check out these videos on mixing mistakes and on sticky epoxy. Thank you.